during the Vietnam War when uh, that guy, that monk lit himself on fire, yeah. the, burn, the burning monk. Yeah. That was, I think, at one point, one of the most uh, like famous images on planet Earth. It was like the most shared. More people saw that, and that was um, from what I understand recently. Zoltan was explaining to me that that a lot of people think that that was like a political thing that he did. But according to him, it and according to other Buddhists, is that um, monks absolutely wanted nothing to do with any sort of political. Um, ideas or movements at all like they were almost like the like the idea of their practice was the actual opposite mm -hmm. of politics so what he believes that that burning monk was it was a a, a call like a recruiting call mm -hmm. because i um I, from what i understand is more people got interested in buddhism and meditation after that yeah um than ever in history yeah, well, you know, speaking of the Defense Department and, you know, DARPA, um, when I was at Stanford, I took a you know, class on Indian Buddhism uh, by a freshly minted uh, PhD uh, from the University of Wisconsin, who you told us that these departments around the country were established by the Defense Department to understand Buddhism because they were thinking, who are these monks that set themselves on fire? Yeah, and so they established you know, centers of you know, Buddhist you know, studies at a number of American universities. Yeah, and you know, she was one of you know, the grad students. Right after this happened. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit! Great story, huh? That's bizarre. Oh my god! I don't even know what to think about that. Yeah, it was a national security uh, kind of issue. Which I can understand, but it, you know, had they, a, like they wanted to understand how you can attain that level of self control or, or, or enlightenment to where you can light yourself on fire and not even blink an eye. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was of interest to understand what is Buddhism? What do they teach? You know, how did they do it? Oh, God, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you, you know, it established a number of you know, centers of you know, Buddhist you know, studies around the country. You know, mm -hmm. So you know, there was a you know, positive outcome. Mm. Yeah, but I've, the motivation was kind of uh, mixed. I've heard lots of stories of, um, not that it really relates to Buddhism in particular, but um, lots of people like high up in the Defense Department and like intelligence agencies and even um, like uh, people that are involved in like rocket launches like for, with NASA and formerly, or formerly for NASA and now for SpaceX that are really into this idea of Rosicrucianism. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't know much about it either. But like the, the basic idea of it is um, you can sort of follow these specific protocols to be more tapped into, this is like a kind of a Jungian idea, but like you can you can tap yourself into this like universal consciousness. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and sharpen your antenna, or or increase the 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 signal of your antenna to some other consciousness, and kind of like where you can download information. Yeah. So how did they do that? Um, one of these guys who's uh, who's described in uh, a book by Diana Pasolka. It's called American Cosmic, and uh, he he was um, I think a mission controller for NASA, and he explained it by like he would he would go outside and get the sun, uh, get out in the sun first thing in the morning, um, spend a lot of time out in nature, not drink caffeine, drink lots of water. And somehow like the idea of having lots of water in your system and no like caffeine or stimulants somehow um, tuned his antenna. Mm -hmm. And this guy claims to be able to download. Now this guy has like patents to all kinds of like, really? uh, like, crazy medical breakthrough patents where he's like made a lot of money doing it and he claims that he gets the this information from these downloads that it, just like come into his mind yeah <clears throat> yeah well you wonder where, where that information comes from yeah uh, yeah like is that just you know un, like a latent uh, bit of information or associations that he hadn't made before or yeah, yeah some or you know some kind of download you know, from above mm-hmm uh -huh. Yeah, well, do you think it, like I've always wondered what, whether it's all that important, at least from a psychological point of view, because it's the, you know, you know the message, you know, the information. It's, you know, the message, you know, the information that's, you know, contained 
in that, that state that's more important than what the state actually you know looks like. Mm. Yeah, what stood what stood out to me about that is like it seems like the more you get away from technology, if this is if this is true, if you can tap into something by doing the by following these protocols, it seems like the the general consensus of it is the farther away you get from technology and the diet the like the the processed foods or energy drinks that we drink all the time or the fucking uh what are those things those caffeine pouches or nicotine pouches and all of this stuff and the 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 more you can tap into like this ancient antenna that we have buried in us mm -hmm. to get information yeah, do the, well, do those. Uh, I was wondering if those ketone bars contribute. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> you might get more fine tuned. Yeah, the ketone stuff's interesting. Yeah. Um, there's also there's this crazy, crazy story I heard of this guy who was like a whistleblower, <laughs> who was talking about how he worked for some like secret aerospace this private aerospace company where they went to they were trying to recruit people for some sort of psychic program where they were trying to basically get psychics into the military and into uh, intelligence to sort of control aircraft or to spy or whatever and they found that the people with the most psychic abilities were people that were in third world countries that weren't connected to western civilization at all yeah, and also young people. So like there was this story that this guy told and he was a whistleblower and it was a uh, account of like two people that corroborated it. That they went to Indonesia after there was like an earthquake and they went there to rescue a bunch of people and they were trying to find young people who were left handed and homosexual. And those were the people with those traits that specifically had the highest psychic or they called it psionic abilities. Right. Um, well, you, you know, the one thing, like I just moved to Albuquerque uh, mm -hmm. last year, I was living in a town called Gallup, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Well, in the County actually I was yeah. outside of town and it was really quiet. Like it, it just was really quiet. You could hear yourself walk, you know, there'd be a ringing in your ears. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just really quiet in Albuquerque. The main thing that I've had a problem with is the sound. Like it's really noisy in a city. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's more difficult to think. Like I would just be alone for days and days at my place in Gallup and that's, you know, and I could be a lot more creative. Or yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Productive too. Mm. Yeah, with fewer distractions. Fewer distractions. Yeah, and yeah. you know the quiet was like it would produce a spiritual kind of effect at a low level. Yeah, yeah, just just being still because mm. there's nothing to react to. Mm. Yeah, I think there's definitely something to that. <laughs>